Hi, I'm Ed with Rigid. Today we're going to talk about the 535 manual threading machine. The capacity on the 535 is from 1 8 to 2 inch pipe. Optionally, you can do 2.5 to 4 inch pipe by way of the 141 geared threader and 4 to 6 inch pipe by way of the 161 geared threader. The bolt capacity or solid stock capacity for this machine is 1 quarter to 2 inch. Some of the key upgrades that they've done to the machine is they've increased the oil capacity. It now holds 1.75 gallons of oil. The chip tray has been improved by 100%. Uh, you can empty the machine with less frequency then. Uh, has a large top cover, which means that you can put pipe sealer on it or your pipe wrenches or any kind of tools that you need to store for a moment as you do your threading. Uh, has a high clearance uh, carriage now for more pipe maneuverability. In other words, it's easier to bring the pipe in and out of the uh, threading machine. It also has a new speed chuck, which has a rocker action in it, which allows you to quickly center and grip the pipe. Uh, it has a self-priming oil pump, and it also has a length gauge that allows you to quickly and accurately cut off the pipe uh, within reason. The die heads that are available for the 535 is the 811A, the 815, 816, and 817 die heads. The standard cutter for the 535 is the 820 cutter. It is a full-floating, self-centering cutter. The advantage of that type of cutter is that if you have a pipe that is slightly bent or slightly out of round, it still gives you the opportunity to cut that pipe if you need to. The spindle speed for it is 36 RPM, which is standard. They have a 54 RPM machine that's available optionally as well. Uh, you can also do left hand or right hand threads with this machine. Uh, the, the standard reamer for this machine is a five fluted reamer, which helps you cut the pipe quickly and efficiently. Uh, for those of you that require higher voltage, there is a 230 volt machine available as well. I'm going to show you how to install the dies in an 811A die head. So I have my four dies set here and my die head. On this side, you have an arrow that says change dies. The lever washer should be in the same direction as the arrow. So you will loosen your lever, slide the lever washer up and out of place, and then slide your die head over. At that point, just snug this. You don't have to tighten it. If you over tighten it, you could straighten out the lever washer and it loses its function. On your dies, you have a full set of dies here. The way that you know that they are a complete set or a matching set is because they all have the same date code. And you have dies number one through four. On the top, it says insert to line and then it has a line and a number. So this one says die number one. Once this is in place, you make sure that your die head is in the open position and you simply slide your die in pocket number one into the line. And you will do the same for die number two into the line, die number three into the line, and die number four. Once you have them all in place, then you can close your die head. And sometimes you have to make sure that everything's right on the same spot. And once that happens, then you close your die head and you back out the lever again, slide the die head over, and put the lever washer back in place. And then you can snug that up. You worry about changing the size or adjusting it for size when it's on the machine because it's a lot easier to see. Thank you. In this portion of the video, we're going to show you how to install the pipe in the 535M. First, make sure that your machine is in the off position. You do that by turning the switch to the off position. Next, you want to grab your accessories and swing them into the up position. So take your cutter, your die head, and your reamer and swing them in the up position. Your speed chuck needs to be in the open most position as well. You do that by swinging the hand wheel or turning the hand wheel in the clockwise direction. In the back, you have a centering device. You will take that and open it by, by turning it to the clockwise direction as well. Grab your pipe, put it in the machine, come around the back and tighten up your centering device. You do that by turning it counterclockwise when you're facing it. On your speed chuck you have a hand wheel. 
Now you'll take that hand wheel and turn it counterclockwise. Or when you're on the operator side of the machine, you're going to turn it towards you. Once it stops, it has a hammering effect that actually forces the jaws to bite into the pipe. So do this repeatedly three or four times, and that way you can make sure that the jaws have correctly grabbed the pipe. I'm going to show you how to cut pipe by way of the slide rule. First thing you want to do is bring your cutter down and make sure that it's touching the end of the pipe or the end of your stock. Bring your slide gauge here to zero, lift up your cutter wheel, and then by way of the hand wheel, move the carriage over to the desired length that you want to cut. Bring your cutter wheel down, and at that point you're ready to go. So I've showed you how to use the slide rule on the machine. Now we're going to use a plumber's rule. You can choose which one you want to use. If you don't have a plumber's rule or if you don't have a tape measure, then you can use a slide rule here, and that's the intention of it. But in either case, put your plumber's rule on the pipe, mark it, and then you can continue to cut your pipe. So we've already showed you how to measure by way of a plumber's rule or the slide rule on the 535. I have my cutter on the mark, and I'm going to put my machine in the forward position. I have my foot switch here. And once I turn the machine on, I'm going to turn this half turn at a time until it cuts through the pipe. Now what I always do, just as a precaution to make sure I'm not overworking the cutter, is every time the sticker on the speed chuck goes around, I will turn this one half turn. Now that the pipe has been cut, we're going to back out our cutter and swing it into the open position. That way it's ready for the next time you cut. In the next part of it, now what we're going to do is we're going to ream the pipe. So I will swing my reamer into position. And since this, so, this is so far back, what I can do is I can actually unlock this, which has a tab there, swing your reamer forward, and then release the lock. Okay. This puts the reamer in position to ream. Now, the reason that we're reaming is because these are displacement cutters, so they're not actually removing material. They're displacing it so that you can cut through the pipe. It leaves a burr on the inside of the pipe. So what we're going to do is we're going to ream that burr out. Uh, there's no general rule of thumb as to how long you should leave the reamer in there. That depends on how much force you apply to the, wheel of the hand wheel of the carriage. So you can use a little more force or you can use a little less, whatever you prefer to do, but in either case, you back out once in a while to make sure that you're not over-reaming the pipe. That could create uh, issues later while you're threading. So I'm going to turn the machine on, I'm going to approach the pipe, and when I feel that I've reamed enough out of the pipe, I'm going to back this off, shut the machine off, and check to make sure that I've removed the burr. Okay, in this portion of the video, we're going to show you how to do a thread with the 535M. So I'll bring my die head down into the threading position. I have my dies adjusted to the correct size, and I'm going to take the throwout lever and put it in the closed position. This puts the dies in place. You can see there how the dies move in and out as I move the throwout lever. So you want it in the closed position or towards you. And if you notice, while you're standing on this side of the machine, everything that you bring towards you is going to get used. Everything that you move away from you is not going to get used. So it's the same theory with the throwout lever. Away from you, you stop threading. Towards you, you are in a threading position. Now the die head has been designed to where die number one is actually in sight with what you can see there as far as threading is concerned. And what you're looking for is for that last tooth to disappear into the end of the pipe. Once that happens, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the throwout lever into the open position while the machine is running. This stops the threading process right there. So here we go. Put my machine in forward.
Okay, so now we're done threading. The last tooth of all of the dies has disappeared into the end of the pipe. And what I'm going to do now, after I have opened the uh, throwout lever, is I'm going to move the hand wheel of the carriage away from the pipe and lift my die head out of the way. And as you can see there, we have a completed thread.